All right, so we are recording. So my name is Georgina Dean and I am the GEG leader for GEG Amman in the country of Jordan in the Middle East. And I'm really excited today to be um, joined by all of you amazing educators, trainers, innovators, and GEG leaders internationally. And I'm really excited to share some of the um, awesome activities that we've been doing in GEG Amman to give you all an idea of how you might get started um, with your own GEG. And I know we are joined, uh, I saw Stephanie on the call and there's a few others that are already GEG leaders. So I'm looking forward to their participation as well. And um, then how do we actually get started? So this is part of a five part series for kickstarting a GEG. And today is all about what is the GEG? What is involved with it? Uh, what are the kinds of things you'll be able to get started for your community for Google for Education community? Um, how you can and then the following four sessions will be just for um, GEG leaders and how they can uh, kickstart their communities as leaders. Okay, so I'm going to share my deck with all of you. One second to get started. If you would like to pop down your uh, name and where you're joining us from in the chat, please feel free. And we are also going to be able to do that in a second. Okay, so here is today's very short slide deck, uh, which we changed around a little bit because we realized that there were more than just GEG leaders uh, joining our call today. Um, so it's more of an introduction session. Um, so my details are there if you'd like to join and then of course as you saw from the invitation um, on social media if this is all part of uh, the global um, GEG um, outreach so you're able to connect there as well and the first thing we want to do is kickstart as well if you um, I'm going to drop the link for the Jamboard session and um, would like to ask you in the chat now and would like to ask everybody to go ahead and um, take a slide each in the Jamboard, jot down your name. Um, you can drop your Twitter handle there as well if you like. And i just like to give a few minutes to everybody to talk about what they think a Google Educator Group is and what that community might involve. So when you click on it, and you can each take a slide, it will open up here. Perfect. Yay, you're all in. So go ahead and take a, a slide, uh, drop your name, and just jot down like the first kinds of images or words that come to mind when you think about what uh, GEG means to you uh, to be part of a larger Google Educator group, what you think might come to mind. So feel free to those of you. Um, is, uh, is there anybody on the call that is new to Jamboard altogether? Just drop that in the chat, please, and then I can assist a little further. Oh, hi, Sandy, we were emailing together. Welcome, Frederick, my buddy. I say my buddy because I met him on the global staff room, so that's awesome. Google uh, for Education is such an amazing platform to meet amazingly inspiring people. So connect with everybody on the call today, guys. It is going to support your growth in education, in education technology, and with Google, for sure. Among other things, I'm sure. I have cat hair everywhere, guys. Sorry about that. Okay, so let's take a look here and see. Good. Everybody's taking a slide, so I will do the same as well. We'll add a slide here. And we're just talking about what do we think, um, what do we think Google Educator Group means? And that could be images, it could be icons, you can use the web. I didn't see anywhere in the chat anybody um, Oh, that's great. Amy says she picks up fast. Perfect. So have you used Jamboard before, Amy? I'm just scrolling through the chat now. So great to see everybody here. So many different countries. Wow. I love that. Okay, so Amy, on the Jamboard, um, basically on the toolbar on the left, you have a pen tool, so you can draw and you can change your color by clicking like this, and you can change and make cool faces and different things like that. You can also add sticky notes here and change the color of your sticky note by typing on it. Um, 
like this, for example, and you can use the corners of the sticky note to make your sticky note bigger and the left one angles it a little bit. And there's an image button here so you can either add images from your Google Drive or from your desktop or you can actually search Google directly. So for example, if we think about the word community and um, because they are um, copyright free, we're able to use any of these images here. So that one looks like a nice, colorful, education-friendly community image. And happy teacher work, teacher week, everybody. It is teacher appreciation week this week. So congratulations to all of you rock stars on the call. All of you guys are doing an awesome job at supporting your schools. So thank you very much. Okay, so let's go ahead and just scroll through and see what people are saying about GEG. So community, like-minded and uh, educators, energizing. Yay, nice gift, Steph. Love it. Supporting energy, uh, educators. I love that word. Support is a big one. Sharing ideas, absolutely. Collaboration, great work. Teresa says, learning, growing, awesome. I like your the image you chose there, Teresa. Great work. Um, helping out, inspiring each other, absolutely. And collaboration from Laura, that's awesome. Nice jam slide, Tara, welcome. Virtual, face-to-face, -face, great. Yes, Robin, lovely images, supportive community, empowering, I like that word, empowering and inspirational, excellent. Um, professionals. Yes, how can I help? I love that because uh, in a global, global group of community, um, we are absolutely there to support each other and it will be all about how can we help each other to grow. So I love that gift, well done. And Bitmojis, I know that Bitmoji, who's that? Is that Darren? No, that's Frederick, Frederick. Frederick, I think you have the same Bitmoji as Darren. Don't tell him I said so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Carla from North Dakota. No, no. I, I got no? to interrupt. That, that is Darren who put it on my slide. So, yeah. Oh, <laughs> so I'm not going crazy. That's good to know. All right. Well, that just goes to show, guys, how awesome collaboration is that Darren wanted to help Frederick with his jam slide. It's very, very positive. I love that. Okay, great. Better together, working together, excellent connecting teachers and communities. Lots of amazing adjectives, motivation, inspiration. Oh, you found the background, very awesome. And Ireland, South Wales, UK, perfect. Hi, Chelsea, nice to see you. Lovely sharing, joining the community. Oh, somebody has really nice handwriting. Are you joining from your iPad, Daniel? Oh, I got a smiley face. I think that means a yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> I was going to say, my mouse handwriting does not look that good. That has got to be an iPad. So Amy, since you're new to Jamboard, this um, Google application is available um, uh, on uh, an app for mobile device. So you can go to the, um, if you have an Apple device, to the App Store, and you can download the Jamboard app, and then you'll be able to write on it as well, or on your mobile phone. I have it on both. Um, and Android as well. Awesome. So Caitlin says networking. Yeah, and learning together. Lovely. Another mobile app. Great. Okay, so that's an awesome, um, an awesome start. And you guys will definitely be able to connect. If you would like to um, save your questions, or you can pop them in the chat, we'll definitely have time at the end. I will um, ask you just to unmute and you can ask questions as well but we will load the questions thereafter um so yeah i basically um was born in England, grew up in Canada, moved to Cairo, Egypt over a decade ago, and then just recently to Jordan. And um, it's been a great experience learning how to support education uh, internationally around the world. I also did a year in Mexico. And the best, one of the best things that I've really loved most about um, 
about being an international educator is the ability to connect and learn from everybody from different cultures and mash that together to try and make the world a better place. And so that brings us to basically um, Google for Education's vision, which is all about grow with Google, which I'm sure is not new to a lot of people on the call today. And grow with Google is literally supporting educators as best we can in their communities uh, among staff and students, um, parents, any any of the stakeholders uh, to support education and enable um, collaboration and the four C's and basically just allow students and learners to thrive to become 21st century digital citizens um, that can be successful in uh, tomorrow's very competitive um, world. So it's a really great time actually as I always say to be an education leader um, because we are on the cusp of something really exciting especially after the current events that's happened and now more than ever educators need us um, and so it's a it's a brilliant opportunity to be able to build a community that's there to support everybody grow so this is what uh, Google educator groups are and I took a screenshot on the next slide to show you um, exactly uh, what the portal um, looks like. So if if and when you choose to take that next step to become a Google Educator Leader, um, this is a screenshot of what the portal looks like. I was initially going to show you guys through the portal so you could see what it's all about, um, but due to um, privacy and policy, this is only for registered GEG leaders. So if you are a GEG leader on the call, then you've already seen this before. But the Google Educator um, program is basically a about those four things right there. Empower, inspire, share, and learn. So this is all to support the Grow with Google, um, Grow with Google vision. And these are the these are the main headings that the Google Educator Group is uh, stands for. And um, as a leader, you can have a co-leader with you to support you to build your community and help it to grow. And then the Google uh, educator community also encourages um, captains, which is something that I really love because it's all about empowering and inspiring the next leaders. And so those leaders um, will be able to take their called captains and literally captains like the empower captain, the inspire captain, the share captain, and the learn captain. So all of these different captains, and if you were on, I know Stephanie's joining us today, so if you were on um, North Cal's uh, launch, you will been able to see that they had a special guest from APAC join their launch to support uh, Stephanie with the launch of her GEG and um, they had about a dozen different captains so it's not just limited to just four captains and one or two um, leaders you can actually branch so as you grow and develop um, be able to pair off team off um, and give other people the opportunity to lead, which is really what this is all about. So it's a really great opportunity. So where does that basically um, leave us today? So today, because we are a mix of leaders and non-leaders, um, actually I would like to clarify, I think that we're all leaders. I think that teachers are all leaders, but as far as GEG is concerned, since we're a mix of GEG leaders and innovators, trainers, and um, teachers, what I'd like to do today is share with you um, some examples of things that I do with my current GEG to give you an idea of what the GEG involves. So you may have already been um, inspired hopefully by Stephanie's uh, North Cal launch, as well as there's another group called GEG Ohio. So I didn't check everybody that's on the call now to see if anybody joined from GEG Ohio, um, but they've been around for quite a long time. Uh, they inspired me when I started, and so that is another great group to follow as well. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share my GEG um, a man screen and I'm going to share with you some of the social media threads so that you can see examples. Actually, I have a couple right here. So the first thing we'll do is start with the monthly webinar series. So if you have joined GEG Man Ohio, basically um, they provide updates at the end of every month for the G Suite uh, feature releases. So obviously this is one really big important thing uh, to provide to your community when you get started is all of the 
G Suite feature releases. So instead of just posting the blogs, you could create a creative way to present that to your folks. Um, so this is one way that I did it. Um, I started with the Google Doc like GEG Ohio had done, and then I found that the Google Slides worked better for for my team and that was one of my biggest takeaway tips for everybody here today was that you have to find uh, a way of communicating and providing events to your team that works for the team for your area for your culture and it's going to be different for everybody so we used a google slides and we um, do the series at the end of every month also um, it is bilingual so it is in english and um, arabic since we're in the middle east and so we have a slide for all of our social media handles which I will drop in the chat at the end to you guys um, and then um, we have a host page so it allows leaders to show their information um, and then we set up our Google slide basically like an example of a choose your own adventure story so that the actual slide deck is an example of a takeaway that teachers can then go and take away as a template and adapt for lessons in their classrooms. So that's been really helpful in our region as well. So we basically just pop a transparent box over each of the agenda items and then it takes you to a different slide in the deck. So we always um, like to celebrate the achievements of all of the education in our team so we always go over the highlights so if we go to slide five you can see there are some of the um, local areas we're pre preparing for online learning um, Mutasim is the co-leader of GGMN and um, you can see him there working with his staff and then our um, online as well and we've been doing Google Meets um, that's another one of the events uh, so although I can't physically show you the meet in another window there's a nice picture there um, to highlight that so during the first week of the um, COVID-19 closures for us in Amman uh, which was the 15th of March um, we started having these uh, Google Meets, which was just a 10 or 15 minute check-in. Sometimes they go a bit longer if uh, people have things they, they'd like to talk about, of course. Uh, but it's just a well-being check-in, just to say, hi, how are you? Are you hanging in there? Um, do you need any support? And I know that um, our global GEG um, staff room is also doing an awesome job at providing that internationally. And then we also had the global virtual staff room as well. So this is just something for our own team that we started. And I know some of the others um, popped into the recent one. We have that on the first week, uh, the first day of each uh, work week um, during the closure to kind of uh, spread some positive energy for others. So we start with the highlights and then um, we go to Googly Treats. So usually either that's a resource that I've made or somebody else in the team has made, but because we're currently in distance learning, it's literally full of awesome Google for Education um, resources for, st uh, for staff, that teachers and educators that they can use in their school communities to help them with online learning. This has been super, um, super really important for my region, which is really important to share with you guys because um, we are going to be growing um, immensely with the Google Educator groups and it's really important to be aware of your your local community and the culture that you're in. So we're only a couple of international schools or a few international schools in this country um, that and there were only two that are set up on G Suite for Education. So there were a couple of schools that I was helping recently just learning um, how to set that up with their schools and provision Google Classrooms through the console, etc. But many schools here in Jordan are just, you know, it's on a teacher per teacher basis. So these uh, links here, like the Teacher Home Center, as you know, and um, the Grow with Google, the distance learning resources, these were super amazing resources to help those teachers get started. Um, so I might I know that might not be the case for many uh, education organizations in North America, but it is definitely um, the case down here in the Middle East. Also, um, we have our logos and they're usually embedded with other resources as well so that um, it's interactive for the community. Okay, so that's an example of Googly Treats. And then basically, after, there's a couple others down here as well. So we shared like the Be Internet Awesome so that parents can support um, their children at home as well as teachers in the classroom, as you know. 
Okay, so here's the really um, cool thing that I enjoyed designing for GEGMN was the G Suite uh, feature update. So basically using the Google Colors, I was able to set up this deck and I basically placed a one of the updates for the month that was released into one of the um, boxes as you see there and you can highlight it and it takes you to the update. So then we basically set up the updates with the information, the help center link and then if there are any gifts uh, located in the blog then they are also posted here as well so I know that it's set up differently with every um, Google Educator group and there is no right or wrong answer as to how you would like to set up um, events that you do. Um, I will say that the event uh, portal, so back here, when you do become a GEG leader, one of the areas here is how to um, prepare events and there are events already set up. So as a leader, you can actually go and take an event and just adapt it for your area and you can roll out with it. So this is um, just previous GEG leaders um, or other members of Google that have um, supported us by putting events there for leaders to use. There's also a section for building a community. So it gives you all of the instructions that you need to know to be able to set up um, your community, your social media, um, all of the things you need to know to, to get started are there. And um, there's also uh, tips and tricks for leaders. There's information on branding and frequently asked questions. So everything that I was able to do with my GEG is as a result of this amazing portal um, that the Google Educated Group program set up for um, leaders and captains. So this is a great place for everybody. Okay, at the end of the um, the monthly webinar series, we have a Q&A slide where uh, members can add their questions if they want. And then we also have the social media information again at the end, including the registration form to GEGMN. So um, when you start a GEGMN, when you start a Google Educator group, uh, you will be able to have access to a Google group so that you can communicate information with your team. And um, they recommend through the GEG portal that there is um, some sort of like registration form. So we've set one up that's bilingual. So you might want to consider that um, if you want to with your team, depending on the languages that are uh, present in your area. And so for example, if we just go to English, of course, I have to put in my email address. And then um, basically, it's got some information about the GEGMN and there's also um, a link further down with the disclaimer. So we arranged a disclaimer, you know, just to protect the um, identity, um, you know, and data, etc. for the, the group. So that's all there. And then you basically um, just go through and you fill out the registration form. There's the disclaimer there. Um, so as a GEG leader, you'll be able to set that up as well. And then we basically collect information from members if they would like to give us information so that we know if they would like to, for example, be part of the WhatsApp group, if they would like to have access to our Google site, would they like to share their Twitter handle? Because it's, because you'd be surprised, which brings me to my next point about how many people um, actually prefer one medium to the other. So I know when I was living in Canada, for example, um, Facebook was a really big thing and, and I didn't really get into WhatsApp until I moved to the Middle East. Um, but here in, in, and what I've seen is that in uh, North America and America, Twitter is really popular as well. So down here in Jordan, um, there's only two people in my entire team that use Twitter and everybody else just is not overly interested in Twitter down here down here in, um, in Mia. So you have to gauge your community. If you know everybody's into WhatsApp, or into Google Groups or whatever, then do whatever is best for your community. But just be aware that not everybody will want to do each or all of them. So it's important that you give people the opportunity to say what they would like to be um, part of. And one thing that we try really hard to do here in GEG Man is make sure that when we're sending out event invitations or communicating with the team, that we are sending the same information across all platforms so that everybody can have access to the wonderful I grow with Google information. Okay, so that's the GGMN registration form. And um, then also we finished the um, 
the monthly webinar. I would like to say also that for the uh, Google Slides, I sent out the link to the Google Slide deck during the webinar. So for example, this webinar um, that you're looking at right now is actually uh, fed through YouTube. So I'm going to show you the YouTube channel in just a second. And during the YouTube session, I take the share link for this slide deck and I drop the um, share link into the YouTube channel, but I make it edit access so that everybody can follow along. And you could choose that if people had questions, for example, that they could add like a comment question on the side of the slide deck. I've seen that has been popular some classrooms um, or you could leave a question and answer slide at the bottom I found that to be very successful with um, our team so there's different ways you could do it and then I turned the edit access to view only at the end um, and we collate everything together and it's um, it's possible to play it back in the YouTube channel um, also each week uh, it was supposed to start out as a bi-weekly event is our tip Tuesdays uh, which may not be unfamiliar to many of you tip Tuesday um, PD is a one slider this was my very first one that we started in February um, just before the closures a cut by a couple of weeks and it was basically just um, like a get started series so as I mentioned before G Suite is very new down here in Aman Jordan and so we're doing a lot of um, basics basics intro to G Suite for education so this was the idea with G Suite for education and as you go up through the slide deck you can just see that it adapted from there so by March um, we were how do we set up student accounts how do we troubleshoot and starting to really support people with distance learning and online learning and then as you go through um, we started embedding things as I said before to support teachers so it's just a one a one slide deck and again I have the links embedded in with the logos and so I drop those links into the YouTube um, chats when we're giving our sessions so that members can follow along on the deck and they can also take the resources that we have embedded um, in there for them so they can actually have takeaways to use when they go away to um, their educational organizations. Um, and we just started um, including uh, guest speakers. So last week we had um, Tamina join and she shared um, some items as well um, for uh, Equatio from Text Help and a bunch of other math tools. And I know Stephanie, I don't know if Stephanie Howell's on the call with us today, but she will be joining us uh, later this evening for Tip Tuesday. And she's going to be sharing her Google Sheets, uh, very exciting Google Sheet tracking student success. So we're really excited about that. So this is another weekly event. It's just a 30 minute event. The monthly webinar is an hour, sometimes a little longer, depending on how many updates there are. Um, and Tip Tuesday is just 30 minutes and just like a, a shorten, um, I don't want to take Darren's short and sweet, but that's what it is, a short and sweet um, basically training session to support educators here. Um, so that's Tip Tuesday. So now during distance learning, we've actually ended up with two events every week and we do the monthly webinar at the end. This is what we've ended up with during um during the COVID-19 closures. But just so that everybody's aware, when we started GEG event back in October, we actually started um, with in-person events. So for a GEG to run and remain active, um, you do need to have one event every three months. So it's one event every quarter, and that's it. That's all you need to keep a GEG going, is just one event every quarter. And, um, of course, you can do more, and there's all kinds of different events that you can load. Um, there's a lot of GEGs that hold social events at like restaurants um, or pubs, depending on where you are, um, and they like to um, uh, weekend events or during the evening. Um, here in Amman, Jordan, we use the um, business park so that we had access to um, internet and technology, and we hosted an event each month. Uh, it was a three to four hour event where uh, other educators in Jordan could join and then myself and the other trainers that are in the team so we are now six trainers in GEGMM and we just basically divvy up the training sessions and we train through based on um, what the needs are of the community so we send out a poll ahead of an event to see what people would like to have support with 
and then we base our event based on the needs of the people who are attending. So as I said before, here for GEG Man, it's basically a lot of basics right now to help everybody get started. However, that being said, people that work like with myself at my school who have been using Google for a little longer, it's a really nice way to give them the opportunity to start in leadership roles and allow them to support with training and do like breakouts and things like that. So hence Tamina who uh, works with me at my school, she um, joined um, and it's just a really great way again to empower and build more leaders. So that's one way that you could do it. Um, sure, Tamina, we, there was one question in the chat. Is it okay if I oh, ask great. you what right you just said? That, okay, so um, I'm happy to do that and pop in so you don't have to go over, but Robin was just asking if, it, if you, um, if it has to be every quarter or is it 60 days? There was a question around that for, for events. In the beginning, is there a different amount of time that, that um, is needed for, for the events? For Just at the start, is it every 60 days? Yeah, no, that's a really good question. So I would have to look at the portal for uh, the, your very first event does have to be done in the first 30 or 60 days. I can definitely drop the answer to that once I check um, the portal, but you're right. It, the very first event is a little shorter as soon as you onboard. And then after that, it's every quarter. Great question, Robin. Are there any others? Thanks, Steph, for moderating the chat yeah, for I'll, me. I'll be happy to look there and uh, if that's okay, I'll wait until it's an appropriate time to pop in. Yeah, yeah, sure, no problem. Chelsea's asking about the events. Do they need to be in person or webinar? Oh yeah, very good question, Chelsea. So the events are completely up to you. They can be in person or they can be online. Um, most of ours are online right now because of the current uh, COVID-19 closure. So we're kind of um, stuck to to a virtual environment, I suppose you should say, you could say. Um, okay, another question is, is there a minimum or maximum number of GEG members? Yeah, that is another great question. So the answer to that is no. As many people as would like to join um, as possible, that would be great. We're always sharing our um, registration form out and because we share our slide decks during every event, we always encourage other educators to take the link and share it out with others to inspire. And what I found was um, we had one um, gentleman join from um, UNRWA. It's one of the um, nonprofit organizations, relief basically for education for the refugees that are coming over and um, over a hundred schools. And he was really excited to get on board with G Suite. And now they're all going to start onboarding. So you just never know how big your reach is going to be uh, until it actually happens. So definitely keep sharing uh, your team's um, social media links out there because it will inspire and just create a flow everybody will want to come and join so absolutely and the more um, the more you promote it and the more fun you have and the more you try and change things up um, the more awesome it'll be so I know we were talking about having a bowling event just before I think it was the end of February when we were planning March because we just onboarded three new trainers so I just realized we were on the meet screen there um, we onboarded three new Google trainers um, in January for Jordan and we were going to uh, get a very large cake and celebrate and go bowling for a social media meetup and then um, COVID happened and it wasn't able to take place. It was postponed. We will have that cake though. I I assure you of that <laughs> eventually. Um, so it's it's all what one of the things that I really love about being a GG leader is just how creative that we're in, enabled to be. So you can think of amazing ideas for your team. You know the people in your area. You know the people or you will get to know them as they join your GEG. And so it's all about what kind of fun and inspiring um, activities you'd like to do with them. So it also depends on your region. Like I'm sure if you're in a, in a state, city, country, whatever that lives by the seaside, maybe you could do like paddle boarding for uh, a social meetup and um, make it googly fun. You could always take cool um, pictures of paddle events and see who can come up with the best Google drawing infographic, right? So it's about finding inspiring ways to um, have people practice using um, G Suite for Education tools and mash up with others. It's all about ed tech agility as well. So absolutely good question. Were there any others in there, Steph? 
Yeah, I was about to type one maybe, but um, when when a GEG first begins, like do people, would you recommend already having leadership um, set up or is that something that you can do after launch? What's the order of operations that you think is most useful for people? Yeah, that's a really good, that's a really good question. So when I first moved to Jordan, I happened to know only from the um, edu directory that there were two other trainers currently in Jordan. So when I um, put out feelers saying that I would like to start a GEG and I contacted um, the right person to get me started, I had not set up leadership and I was still trying to get in contact with those people through email. So I had met the other two trainers that were here um, before I had heard back from Google about starting the GEG. And so leadership was definitely not set up. Um, so that is a great question. I know that I was talking to one of the upcoming um, GEG leaders the other day who said that they had already set theirs up. So I think it's just whatever works for you. And I think it's also region dependent because it sounds like, if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, that in North America, people are really eager to get going. So you probably might fill those spots really quickly quickly guys um, I would advise to you know meet before um, you assign leadership and again that's just my advice but I'm not necessarily an expert and there are other GEG leaders on the call but I would get to know your team first and get to know the people that are interested um, have some social outings have some fun with it um, get to know what people's interests are what are their strengths what are their inspirations what are their goals um, and then you'll be able to help feel out where the best um, areas of strength would be for your GEG. Does that make sense? I think that I think that's a great response. Um, and how do people? Um, I think another one that might be a natural question is how do people figure out who else might be in their region to contact? Yeah, so that's a good question. If I understood correctly, I'll just get clarification stuff. So you mean like, how do people find other teachers in their region that might be interested to join or leaders specifically? Um, I think my question was around leaders because knowing that if you're trying to get something launched or started, who might be the right group to help you in that pursuit? Okay, and how that's do you find out who they are. Okay, perfect. So I would recommend um, that if you are, it is a really good question. So for myself, for example, we are the only active GEG in the whole of the Middle Eastern region. So when and when anybody would like to start a GEG, they would have to um, contact me to receive a nomination to become a GEG leader. And like I know um, America has just had a really big push. And so the Google Trainer Program Manager, May, has um, contacted me to help a few people. And I think she's reached out to different um, Google Educator leaders to support them so how would people know who to contact that is a really great question I would recommend going to the um, Google Educator um, page let me just get that for you because there is a contact to be able to add or if you are interested or know somebody who's interested then you can reach out on different social media threads to those Google Educator groups so for example um, like Steph for example you have just launched um, North Cal so if anybody who is close to that state or that region, for example, they could reach out to that GEG leader. If you're anywhere in Europe, Middle East and Africa, you're welcome to reach out to me and I'm happy to support you that way. I'm going to try and find um, the link. That is a really good question. And if not, I will share it on the slide deck after for the Jamboard slide deck. Um, Okay, so when you go to the, yeah, when you go to the um, EDU directory, so let me just pop that here in the chat for you guys, you guys will be able to search for GEG leaders in your region. And I know that they're currently looking to, here's the link for you guys, um, you can look for people in your region, um, either for a trainer or an innovator, 
or a GEG leader. So right now, from what I've seen on the GEG directory, some of the uh, GEG leaders are listed in the directory and some are not. So even if you didn't find a GEG or a GEG leader, you could still reach out to a trainer who could then post in our community and we would be able to um, get that contact for you. Just so that everybody's aware, Google Educator Group has regional managers that actually work for Google. So for example, there is someone at May, for example, is um, now taking over for the North American region. So I know in the Google form, there were some people from Canada asking if GEGs were possible in Canada. So the answer for that is yes, because uh, May is supporting the GEG rollout across the Northern American continent. So the answer to that is yes. And um, for the APAC region, it is Aileen Apollo. And for the EMEA region, which is Europe, Middle East, and Africa, it is Dean Stokes, who you may have um, seen all of those through the Twitter threads. Um, they are Google employees that manage the GEG um, different regions. So those are the ones who receive the nominations from other GEG leaders to get them set up as a leader on the portal. Does that answer the question okay? I, I think that was perfect. There was another kind of sub question about, are you allowed to be working with people from your own school? It seems like you do that, Georgina, but I think there was a question just, is that is that allowed within leadership to be starting it with people kind of in your own area, own school and own area? Yeah, that's a really good question. And it's an interesting question, Stephanie, because I know that in um, North America, schools run on like districts. Is that correct? So there's a bunch of schools in an area together. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, so that is a great question. If you found that um, that there are people in your school that would like to set that up with you, then absolutely, um, it's definitely possible. And I would say that more than ever, it's all about growing as many people as you can. So um, definitely everybody is included, whether they're from your school or the neighboring school or the neighboring um, city uh, for where you live, then absolutely everybody is involved. Like for myself right now, I have, um, I was living in Cairo, Egypt before, and there are a lot of people from the previous school that I was working at that are members of GEG Amman, especially that there's no GEG group in Egypt right now. And I know that there are a couple of people possibly on the call um, that are interested in getting that started. So um, anybody from any country from anywhere is welcome on any GEG um, group. I know that I'm part of GEG Ohio. I pretty sure I filled out Steph's form to join North Cal and I my advice is that I would encourage people to join each others because I think um, that's how we will grow and the more we learn from each other the the better we'll be right it's like professional development um, no matter how much you know about an app I always find that I learn something new when I watch another webinar or another session from another trainer so I'm learning something new every day I absolutely love it to bits so I do highly Highly recommend um, everybody jump on to each other's GEGs um, to to share together. Yeah. So, is there another question, or do, can I go ahead and show you the YouTube channel, or shall I just drop you the link and then you guys can watch that? I realize it's five, and I think I jumped on what like five or ten minutes late because I was I got my time zones wrong. So sorry about that, guys. I will drop my YouTube. I'll stop presenting. I'll leave it open for more questions and I will drop the YouTube channel if you would like to look at examples of virtual um, virtual episodes from GEG Amen. There you go. There's our channel. Okay, so if you would like to unmute and ask a question or just um, go ahead back in the chat, I'm happy to look at that as well. Just FYI, you people were singing your praises while while you were in the presentation yeah. so where do you find the time i mean <laughs> please lady oh <laughs> i wasn't expecting that thanks no it's it's totally um cool okay frederick thanks for coming it's nice to see you have a good meeting um louise thank you for your comment i'm not really sure what you mean the time but um do you mean I the mean, amount like, of events do... i'm hosting no in the sense that you do everything you seem to do everything so like I, I try and do everything, but I can't. I never find the time. Time is definitely, a, a, you know, 
something difficult but i want to shout out to all of you no steph if you could drop that in the chat i would be super grateful because i was running back from the rain going you know i had a bag of bread and orange juice and i and then i got uh robin's whatsapp message and i was like oh my gosh husband take the orange juice and the bread i have to go online now i'm late so um yeah, but I want to give a shout out to all of you guys. From what I've seen, all of you guys have kids. So I don't have any kids. And that gives me a lot more time. So um, that may be part of the reason. But, you know, it just grew. It started out in October, guys. GEG Man started in October with one event. It was a monthly webinar at the end of October. And then our first live event. So GEG Man opened on the 17th of October. We held the webinar. And we were planning for the first uh, in-person event, which happened at the beginning of December. So it took a month and a half to set that up, guys. And then it just started rolling. And we found other ways um, in which people could benefit from um, from these uh, virtual events. So yeah, that was it. OK, Stephanie um, has dropped a evaluation form in the chat. If you would like to fill it out, uh, it will help uh, everybody, including myself. Um, that would be super appreciated. So go ahead and you can fill that out. Um, just so everybody knows who's here, the following four events will definitely be how to set different aspects up. So today was more of a taste tester about what a GEG could entail, what it looks like. Um, and what it involves and uh, different ways that you could set that up for your communities and then the next four events will be geared just to sorry guys I seem to have cat hair in my face the cats like to jump sometimes in front of where I'm doing training and so I have cat hair in my face but um the next four sessions will be for the GEG leaders. So after this call, if you would like to go ahead and become a GEG leader, uh, please just let me know, um, PM me, you have my contact information and I will um, uh, drop my email again in the chat for you and I'm happy to send you a nomination. And um, there we go, perfect. That's my email address. And um, for GEG leaders who would like to have some go-to tips on how to set this up, so there'll be a session all on um, social media. As easy as that may sound, there's um, other little things that will help you, like how to future date your Twitters and use different things like that, your tweets, I should say, um, how to set up your YouTube. So there's different kinds of ways you can stream. There's the StreamYard, uh, there's OBS, there's live stream directly from YouTube um, Studio. So there's lots of different ways to set it up. So each of the next four sessions will be focused on different um, ones of those. The very first one will be a um uh, a walkthrough of the geg portal so the image that i showed you guys of the portal we will walk through how it works and how to set up um your branding and etc if that answered the question yes stephanie says she's interested in how do we make events so i definitely want to be able to um, share that with you i was just very conscientious when i was preparing for today's session yesterday after so many people had signed up that because there was a mix of geg leaders and non-geg leaders we have to be really careful with the um with the legal bits i guess we could say right guys so with the legal bits involved uh we're not able to share everything unless those people are signed up for those sections so the geg portal is definitely for geg leaders and captains only so i wasn't really able to get into the nitty-gritty of that but hopefully these examples have given you um a small start to get started and um if you're interested then you can sign up for the next four events which will be how to start setting up your events and your social media etc so are there any sure, um, one other one other question uh, i yeah. thought this was an awesome beginning a perfect way to start so kudos um for for that um what is the typical timing so when you were saying for for the process i think that might be a useful bit of information um, around the timing of the timing it takes from getting the nomination form and hopefully then hearing back and actually getting something instituted so that people are aware um, what to expect in that regard. 
Yeah, that's a really great question too. So time frames, I think, but don't quote me on this, is related to regions. Um, I, I have colleagues that are working in APEC, and then you know I've been connecting with the two Stephanies now, who have been saying that that um, you know Stephanie Howell from GEG Ohio, the onboarding process was a little longer. Mine took about a month total, just under a month, three to four weeks max. And then um, I know I was talking with Robin uh earlier and she said that she received um her onboarding like within a couple of days of being nominated so i would just say if you know that you're interested in sparking your community and you'd like to be a leader then let reach out to a geg leader and we will nominate you and then that process can get started um right away stephanie says hers was longer for sure yeah do you want to talk about that then steph since you're if that's your personal experience um yeah, mine, mine, I think was longer um, here in I'm in California, but, um, but at the time there wasn't May wasn't um, when I was trying to get it started, May wasn't in charge of um, North America region. So, so it was taking a bit longer. The GEG leaders I knew were all people in APAC. And when I would send that in, I wasn't in that region. So there were just all of these kind of disconnects. So um, I don't think it was in any way to place blame anywhere, but it just kind of kept getting spun around and I was waiting to hear an answer. And then when I actually connected, May and I, um, I met up with her, we had a lunch at Google. Um, wow. talking about other things which was amazing and that was one of the questions that i had it was after that i'm sure there were other things in the work it was not just from our lunch so please don't take it that way but after that there were lots of questions that started to happen around how to help support other people who would like to to begin these groups regionally and she put that on the us canada form specifically that that they saw this as a way that especially during this time to help educators supporting each other and that they're going to be doing a big push um, towards GEG. So I think she's tried to speed up the process for us here in this area because we don't, there were only, I believe, 26 um, GEGs and that was after some pushing here in the US um, and Canada. So so not, not many considering how big this region is. Um, and so knowing that, I think she's trying to help speed up that process. So I do think, Georgina, this is very much needed because I think there's going to be a big uptick in them here and all around the world. So thank you so much, Georgina. No, you're welcome. It seems so because there's a lot of people that came to the event today. It started out with six people referred to from uh, May, as you were saying, and then it ended up being a lot more people joined. So that's great. Um, does anybody else have any final questions before we um, close the call? Caitlin just asked about naming convention. So if you want look at the chat, I think she just asked uh... us naming g yes that is a really good question we were just talking about branding today weren't we so um there are some very specific branding guidelines for geg and it does need to be geg and then the chapter so they don't like to give at least this was the information i was given they don't like to give geg to a country specific because they are hoping that more people will branch out in their local communities to allow for more leadership um with grow with Google. So for that reason, they'll try to take like the capital or obviously if you're in Canada or America and that's really big, then it could be like province or state and then different regions. Um, so for myself, it's a man. We are the capital of the country of Jordan, which is small in comparison to the two countries in North America for sure. Um, but yeah, so it will be GEG -E and probably your city name. Um, like I know Robin's on the call. So hers is G G E G SoFlow, which is South Florida, and then it's NorCal, right, Stephanie, for yours, GEG -E NorCal? Yep. Yeah. We went and back and forth with how to, with how to decide that because California was so big. Um, oh. And there, there wasn't anything started. There is a... There, there was something in central California, but it's not active. So my hope was at least in dividing it that way, that maybe somebody from Southern California wants to start one as well. And if we need to sub split after, if we get more and more people, we can start to do that. But it was the way to get it launched was my thought. Yeah, it's super exciting. I think the smaller the names are as well, the easier it's going to be for social media as well. So that's another um, nice way to abbreviate things, Stephanie, for sure. And there's another one in the list here. A list of educators that have passed a Google in Nigeria to start up a GEG. Great. John, are you joining us from Nigeria? Oh, 
wow, that is so amazing. Welcome, John. Um, yes, I will look on the Google Educator directory for you. Um, did you use the registration form um, to join today's call? If you did, uh, yes, I, I did. Oh, great. Okay, so I have your email. I will reach out to you directly um, with the list. If you are interested in starting a GEG in Nigeria, then I can connect with you directly and I'm happy to help you with um, nominations. Absolutely. There's no problem. I'll, uh, I'll appreciate to have that so that I'll be able to communicate with them and then start off something. My pleasure. It's really exciting. Anybody Thanks. else? I'm really excited because there are lots of countries that I still haven't seen around the world and I just am so blessed to be able to meet everybody from around the world today. Thank you so much for joining us. Caitlin said, Robin, uh, let me just check the chat again. Ah, okay. So you're also, Caitlin, you're also interested in Florida. Is that correct? Forgive me because I haven't been to Florida yet. Uh, so I don't know, but I'm sure there will be a way. I don't know if you're in exactly the same city, but like Stephanie just said, May has been awesome. And it is about growing leadership across um, Grow with Google Vision. So absolutely, they'll be able to work with you on that. If you um, put fill out the form that May sent. Stephanie, do you have that form actually? Because I don't have the North American um, form. Yeah. If you don't, we I'll can give it, it to you guys it later. In. I'll grab it and put it in. And okay, I have, great. I have, I, I have, I was already approved to do the state, um, but I didn't realize that there were regional ones that were getting started. And so now I'm realizing it might be more impactful to have a region. And it's a big state too. And we're in diff, we are in different regions, Robin and I. Uh, so and I, I you're think Caitlin? I'm going to talk to me about, yes. I'm oh, Caitlin. okay, great. Hi. Sorry. When someone starts uh, talking, I'm like, is that uh, the same name that was chatting? This so. is Caitlin, yeah. I was just clarifying a little bit. Yeah, I was approved. May already approved me for the statewide GEG, but now I'm realizing because there are regional ones that there's regional interest that it might be better for me to kind of switch. So I think I'm going to, I sent May a message to see if I need to like resubmit the form or if she can just change the name of the group. I haven't done anything with it yet. I just filled out the form and she said, yeah, that's great. Uh, I think if you email her directly, yeah. she is so fast at responding back. Um, so that that would be my advice is to to message her directly. I know that she gave um, the anybody in nor in um, the U.S. and Canada access to an actual spreadsheet um, that that we can then put in information. So. I think if you wanted to update anything directly on that spreadsheet and then alert her that you did, she said, she told me that once things are put on there, like your specific coordinates, if you put in the latitude and longitude, you might need to alter that. And then it takes, she said it can take about a month for that to get updated on their new map. Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah, that's perfect. I'm really glad you asked. And I'm glad Stephanie's here because I wouldn't have a clue about Florida. <laughs> Thank you. That's wonderful. Are there any other questions I, from anybody? Don't feel shy. Yeah. Hi, I'm Pilar. I'm from Mexico, Monterrey. Hi, Pilar. Um, How are you? I realized, hi. I'm fine, thanks. Uh, I realized um, about, I, I think it must have been a month ago or something, that there is a GEG, but in Mexico City. So that made me realize that in my city, where we have, uh, as far as I know, two reference schools and a lot of people that are like in my own school, it's myself as a trainer and there's another trainer who's the one in charge of EdTech. And uh, we have a colleague innovator and lots of level ones and some level twos. So I thought maybe we should start a GEG and it's, uh, this is why I ask and I started with, with the people in my own school, maybe get them excited or interested. And I know there's another school not very far from where I actually live because I, I work very far away from my house. But, um, close to, well, closer to where I live, there's another school that I know. It's also a reference and there's a lot of certified teachers. So if nobody has been interested as of yet, I asked May, what do I do? And she directed me towards uh, the one in Mexico City because apparently she's the one to um, to ask. Nominate but I you. haven't yet. Yeah, well, I don't know. 
I haven't yet asked her anything. I mean, she was uh, glued to the email. She was copied into the email that I sent May and she didn't respond or acknowledge. So I probably have to send her an email directly. And I don't know if there is somebody working for Google in charge of this. I don't know if, if she is the one. So that's yeah. why I was interested in, in, in to see what you had to do because um, uh, I saw, well, I've seen you, you're very active, Georgina, in the emails of, of the, of the group and and then you said that you were in charge of the one in jordan i thought you were living in the states to be honest oh and then and then i saw that you were uh on jordan i'm like well it's even better because it's like information away from just like the talks about districts it's so different in in mexico because public schools are not onboarded yet to like a lot of technology it's mainly private schools and i've heard that with the covid thing um some schools in some areas of Mexico have been interested now in like the G Suite. So I think that this is a time to, you know, organize stuff, right? That's, That's why so I exciting. was interested. So, yeah, do you think then that I can start with like the people in my own school, maybe get them? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So just to address a couple of the things that you said, first of all, that's super exciting. Did you say you're from Monterey? Yes, I am. Oh, that's where I lived for a year, set six years ago. That's so awesome to connect with someone where I lived in San Pedro. Do you know San Pedro? Yeah, that's where I yeah. was. <laughs> yeah, so that's you really You were in great. the American School Foundation, I suppose. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I work at Brillamont, which is uh, very close. To ah, it. yes, that is so great to connect with you. It's really wonderful. And um, it's really exciting that you'd like to get that started in Monterrey. And I know that that is going to be excellent. The idea with the GEG Mexico would be that that GEG leader would be the closest one to your area to nominate you. So that's the, probably why they're asking you to reach out to GEG Mexico. But I can see that Stephanie and Luis are also going back and forth Luis are you do you have any information on that or no he's he's writing the right there yeah oh, he's writing me okay. message, message Luis over Twitter he will message you back even if he's in meetings but yes he's connected to the person who oversees that region and can help that's you with that. yay that's uh, wonderful that's excellent. thank you yeah I actually and think um I feel not not that I think I feel like I know Luis because I've seen so many of his input in the in the trainer group. Uh, he he knows a lot, but yeah, I'll yeah. connect with him definitely. Yeah, and then well, just so to let you know, you. sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. That's it's great to know that you actually live here. I heard that you lived in Mexico. I was gonna ask you where, and it turns out it was like. It was Monterey, yeah, 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 it's super cool. Um, and then for your other input about like, you know, that there are a lot of local schools that are not on with G Suite, yes, you're not alone. And that happens in a lot of areas around the world um, with public versus private or international versus nonprofit, et cetera. It's, it's, uh, it's just different in each region. And I think that's what's also so special about becoming um, being part of a, a GEG. Um, you know, we were talking the other week with Stephanie's North Cal launch about the power um, of a GEG and just what driving force um, it has to inspire education, regardless of even G Suite, just bringing people together, bouncing ideas, uh, changing the world to be a better place. It's a really awesome place to be and you will be surrounded by very inspiring people that will help you grow as a professional, as a leader and as an educator. So it's definitely the place to be. And if you have schools, um, Pillar that are not on G Suite that would like to onboard, then the contact for your GEG who does work with Google is usually also is either or is um, in the same team as the person who does the regional sales for that area. So I know the GEG Google uh, link Dean Stokes for my area, he supports with that. So if I have other schools that need to onboard, then he can support with that as well. Also, you may find people um, start to join your GEG that are part of Google Partners. 
Um, there are different kinds of partners in the Google <laughs> Cloud community. So those partners could be educational partners. Um, they could be business cloud partners. So for example, I have um, one of my trainers in GEG, Aman Ahmed. He is a Google Cloud partner and they sent him to train businesses. So the Google for, um, it's the enterprise version of G Suite and he trained that for enterprises. And then when COVID started happening, um, he started getting requests for education and he onboarded uh, as a Google trainer as well. So you'll find that as your team grows, so do the specialties uh, that are able to fill in gaps and help in those areas as well, Pilar. So it's a very exciting time. We're, we'll, yeah. we'll be there and people will help you with those schools. Don't worry. I think I'll, I'll also talk when, uh, well, at some point when I think, uh, I'm thinking when we come back, but we don't know when. Um, there is one, a couple of people that work for uh, one of the Google partners, uh, Evolution, which is in Mexico City too, that have been the ones um, consulting the school that I'm at. So they probably would know, would know a little bit more and maybe help out too and be part of it. Yeah. Thanks, Georgina. Thank you. It's been very Yeah, nice. you're welcome, Pilar. Okay, so is there um, any other? Oh, Jonas is saying they introduced their captains for GEG Sweden. That is so exciting. Uh, please feel free to share if you want to unmute. Uh, you're welcome to share your experience. I think that will inspire others as well. Let's see if the sound's working. Yeah. Yeah, um, so uh, basically it was uh, listed on the Google blog. Uh, or Google for Education blog, uh, and uh, I've seen the slide deck. I've happened to be in two meetings now, so I haven't seen all the slide deck. But as you said, uh, I am the uh, Inspire captain in our team. And uh, what was so good is that before that, we had our GED leader who was running it, but running it on your own, it gets quite hard work. So by spreading it out and me as an Inspire captain, I'm the one who makes sure we have meetings. And now during COVID-19, we do virtual meetings and it's based on, uh, the, I think it's called the road uh, tour, uh, where it's like materials where you can collaborate online. And then we also have a share captain who look out for new things that comes in this. And then we also have our knowledge captain who is very well uh, insight to the ring technology behind it and like admin stuff. So I think there's a fourth one. Which one is that? <laughs> I'm missing one. The learn that. one. Learn yes, or the learn captain. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I can recommend that if you are starting up, build the community around you because otherwise it will be uh, hard to get the, the momentum. Absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing, Jonas. That is so important. The power of community and team and to support each other, because you're right, it is a lot for one person to handle everything. So when you pull all the pieces together, you help each other grow and be more successful. So thank you for sharing your story. That's so exciting to hear. So I, I think what we'll do is we'll stop the recording there. I'm happy to hang out a little bit longer. I just noticed people started dropping off and it's over an hour. So I will stop the recording. If you would like to ask more questions, I'm happy to um, hang out. So I'll just click stop. If you could um, just kindly fill out the evaluation form that Stephanie shared in the chat, that would really help us um, and also help me to know what else you would like obviously we have plans to help you with the portal and the social media etc but the more feedback you give then the more information we can help you with to support your growth as a um geg leader and or captain in the future so thank you for filling that out in advance and um also just to remind everybody to check out the social um, media threads for all of the awesome GEGs uh, that have joined today's session, including the reach out for global GEG, um, which, um, oh, somebody else is joining as I'm about to end the recording. Um, welcome. And um, yeah, so make sure to reach out there and I will stop the recording.